Good morning. We're talking about how is everybody? Good morning. We're talking about James's loud rooster this morning. <laughs> hey. I'm doing well. How about you guys? How was your weekend? Oh, car trouble. Ugh. I I won't even talk about car trouble. That's how much I hate it. <laughs> Snazzy. I love it. What'd you do this weekend? Anybody do anything fun? Yeah. First weekend of football. Parade in a music festival. Or a festival, not music festival. That sounds fun. Sleeping. The picnics. Oh, I'm so glad you went, Gracie, and got to see your bestie even better. Awesome. Sounds like a fun weekend. Question, did anybody do this? This game pre-class, anyone? And I'm asking because I'm looking at the results and maybe my, maybe I'm crazy, but I don't see any of the, I know, it's okay. It's probably <laughs> I don't see fault. anybody doing it. So there's that. It's probably partly my fault because we were just Nobody talking. did it. It's okay. <laughs> you can't click it. Let's see. See if I bring it down. It's blue. So usually blue means you can click it. It's all right, though. So this is a unit two game. I was going to have you play. Um, maybe we'll do it at the end of class instead of the beginning of class since since it kind of disappeared and y'all didn't see it. There's not very many of us in here today either. Oh, Xander typed it out. Thank you, bud. It's definitely So we can do it at the big end of class, though, if... Since since we didn't see it. I know you all wouldn't just ignore it and not do it for me. Oh, it's raining where you're at. It's, su it's sunny here. Hold on to my sunshine here. Awesome. Well, let's talk about what we're going to be doing today in biology. And let's go through this lesson, and then I'll let you take that at the end so that we still have kind of a gauge on what we know. Um, would any be interested in reading? Am I not here? You know what? My volume is not up. Ms. Schaefer, were you talking? Did I totally not hear you? <laughs> I just thought, well, I'm just trying. <laughs> yeah, I, I was talking, and then I, I could tell you probably didn't hear me. I was like, it was uh probably my fault at the beginning because we were just talking away and not, I didn't remind them to do that link. Sorry. <laughs> no, I like saw your mic go off and then I never heard you. And I was like, well, maybe she decided not to say anything. And then I looked down and my volume was all the way down. I, I am, I'm really not that much of a jerk. I am so sorry. You're fine. <laughs> You're oh. fine. We were talking about chickens and roosters. James has a very loud rooster. They thought that, that the rooster was a chicken, but it's a rooster. <laughs> Well, the, I miss out on a really fun conversation. It sounds like yeah. actually I've always wanted a rooster. I feel like it would be a fun way to wake up. I have a feeling James would give you got a rocket chore. It's not, not, not everywhere allows them because they could get so noisy. What time do they wake you up though? Uh, they, they crow about seven, eight, and then they, then they crow just all day on and off. All day. Kind of a not not constantly, but they crow like on off on off on off at intermittent times because they're communicating. 
hilarious. <laughs> Sam yeah, says roosters are not fun to wake up to. I don't know. Maybe it's just that maybe I just need to borrow a rooster for a week and like see if I would really enjoy it. I feel like it'd be great during the week, but I would want it to not do that on the weekends. <laughs> yes, that's true. There you go, Stephanie. Borrow a rooster just for the weekdays and yeah. not on the weekends. Yeah, I want fresh eggs. I feel like that would be such a more natural way of waking up than my alarm. I don't know. But I might change my mind. I am so sorry. I really didn't mean to talk over anybody else and, and Miss Schaefer, whoever else may have been talking. I don't know why my volume was down, but it was. So my apologies. Awesome. Well, Gracie and Lizzie are both ready to go. So Gracie, if you want to read our first goal for today and Lizzie, you want to take away your second, that would be fantastic. Not be, it's be, oh, there we go. Um, compare and contrast the three types of bonds ionic, covalent, and hydrogen. Thank you. <laughs> yes, bringing those accents in. All right, Lizzie. What bond holds atoms together in a water molecule? Awesome. Everybody give Gracie and Lizzie a little love this morning for getting on their microphones and cameras so early. Kudos to you. Thank you so much. If I just did a random poll this morning and said, what do you know about these things? What would your face look like if I could see all of your faces when I was reading these? Would you be like, heck no, I don't know these things. Would you be smiling because you're like, this is easy peasy? Or are you being like, eh, I don't know. Yeah, well, we're getting into some things that I feel like, look, you might not all have confidence in. So we're going to learn something, right? We're going to learn something. Absolutely right, Josh. Coffee first. Coffee first thing class. <laughs> awesome. So remember that during um, the week, what our schedule typically looks like is Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. We're going to have class together right here from 8.30 to 9.10. Thursday and Friday, there are a variety of help sessions offered for you um, to participate in and come and just check in, see how things are going, do an assignment, go over any content that might be feeling a little crazy for you, all right? So that is this week. Let's look at atoms, all right? Atoms. Atoms are the smallest living thing ever. Hold on one second. I wanna make sure this is my right lesson. Cause I've been trying to peek here. Let me make sure I've got the right one. I feel like this is it, but I feel like there's one before here and I'm looking for it. All right, this must be right. Who knows wh what an atom is before I flip to the next slide? Let's go to the whiteboard. Who knows what an atom is? If I said atom, what do you say? First word that pops into your mind, stick it on the board or stick it in chat adam i say adam what first thing everything but nothing a star proton neutron electron oh i like these words Ooh, amber yeah right on Ooh, you think of this diagram fancy and the word tiny good what else do you think of Literally nothing can be wrong here. I say, Adam, what do you say? Like a guy's name? <laughs> what else? Life, building blocks. Ooh, I like it. Molecule. Ooh, good one, Isaiah.
Adam is your friend's name or your dad's friend's name. That's awesome. What else? I see stuff coming in. I say, Adam, what pops into your head? Oh, that's funny, Draven. Ooh, five moles. We're pulling out the moles. Good. I like this. The dude from the Bible who ate all the fruit. Hilarious. None of these things are wrong, all right? Because it's the first thing that popped in your head. They make up everything so they can't be trusted. Yes. Um, small. That's a good place to, to start. Because anything that is every, like everything that is anything, anything that is everything, I don't know, is made out of atoms. Look around your room. Tell me three things you see in your room in chat. Three things that you're looking at right now. I'm looking at a lamp, a bowl, and a record player. TV, your mom, water, a glass, jar, dogs, coffee cup, puppy, pocket knife, ball mouse, bottle, cosplay helmet, plushies, clothes, your phone, all of these things, your computer, all of these things are made up of atoms, all right? And even though it sounds like the name Adam, it's actually A-T-O-M, atom, all right? Atoms are the smallest thing th uh, that exists, all right? Yes, some of you mentioned that when we talked about cells, they're even smaller than cells. Atoms are even smaller than cells. And atoms make up things that go in, that are parts of living things. But atoms also compose things like you're talking about, like your, like a, a jar, like your coffee cup, like your computer. These things are all made out of atoms, okay? Atoms are the smallest thing that can exist. And to, to exist, it needs to be made up at least of one atom, okay? How do we feel like that? Atoms are the smallest thing that exists. It's called the smallest amount of, of matter. Anything that is in existence is made up of matter, right? Or of stuff. And this stuff is called atoms, at least one atom, okay? All right, good. You're following me. Atoms are the smallest living thing ever. And they make up everything. All right. They make up by me, which is living, but they also make up my coffee cup, which is non-living. Right? How does this work? Well, there are going to be lots of reactions and interactions that go on. Somebody said building blocks over here, and I really like that. Because what atoms do is they build things together, right? And those things that they build together make up all, all of the things in the world that we're seeing, okay? And how does that work? That's what we're going to look at today. So in unit two, we're going to learn about all the things that are not living that living things need, right? I still don't drink coffee. I, I understand, Jenna, but what are some things that you need that are not alive? What are things you do need to live that are not alive? Coffee, warmth, air, food, food, your tattoos, water, your bed, shelter. I run on Duncan. Yes, all of those things that you need food water the the things you that you think you need like duncan right all of those things are made of atoms and so we're going to look at this unit this first unit um or unit two is going to talk about all the non-living things that we need and why we need them all right so we're starting with atoms we're starting at the very bottom and we're going to look at how atoms make 
the things that we need. Your closest friends. Tell me about your closest friends right now. Tell me about some of your closest friends. You have a rap group, my fam, and a couple other people. Good. They are kind. They're sweet, creative. Good. Your sister, all oh, your siblings. So you have bonds with people, right? Do you have bonds with people? Whether it's a lot of people or a little bit, we have bonds with people, okay? And so do atoms, all right? So do atoms. So we're going to talk about two different types of bonds that atoms have today. Ready for this? Now, what I want you to do is, is stick with me here on this first type here of bond. Okay, this first type of bond over here is called covalent. Covalent. What does the word co mean? Or that prefix, not word. What does the prefix co mean? Part of, at the same time. I like to think of like more than one, together. Yes, all of those things. Good. So a covalent bond is when two atoms come together and they share a bond. And I say share a bond because they that's what happens. On the outside of these electrons, or electrons. Of these atoms, we have electrons. Everybody use your pointers and point at these little red dots. Electrons have a negative charge, and they're on the outside of an atom. And on the inside, there is a positive charge, okay? That positive charge center keeps those electrons attracted, right, to the inside. It keeps them contained. This is magnetism going on right here, okay? So these two atoms each have one electron. On this very inner shell, you only need two, all right? And so in order for them to each get two and have a completed shell, right? What these two atoms do is they come together and they look, share both of these electrons. It makes them happy. It's like a completed project. Does that make sense? Atoms like are constantly working to complete the outer shell. They want their, they want to feel full, just like you like to eat until your belly is full. Our electrons are looking for uh, our our atoms are looking for electrons until they get a full. Yep, I stuck that black box over there for a minute. Until that outer shell is full. In covalent bonds, they share. So everybody put in chat, covalent equals share. Covalent equals share. In a covalent bond, you share. All right. It's like my sister. She lives three doors down. And our kids like cheese pizza, but we like pepperoni pizza. Um, what or no, let's say they like pepperoni and cheese, and we like pepperoni and cheese, but it's cheaper just to get one pizza with one topping. So we each get one. I get a pepperoni pizza, and she gets a cheese pizza. And so then we meet next door, we meet on the sidewalk and we split our pizza down the half and we share. Does that make sense? In a atomic situation, just to, I know, I know, Nick, but you know what happens when you take the pepperoni off a of cheese pizza? What happens, guys? You, you don't just peel off the pepperoni. It peels off the cheese and all the sauce. And then my kids are just eating a piece of 
bread with sauce on it. <laughs> right. So that's exactly what happens. In a covalent bond, we have two atoms. And to make their projects complete, to get their full shells, they share their electrons. They're good friends, right? They're nice, happy friends. Now let's look at another relationship between atoms, all right? And another relationship, you have two atoms, and this is ionic, all right? And instead of sharing, what happens? There's the two atoms, all right? They come together, and instead of sharing, what looks like just happened? Yeah, Jenna thief straight up thief over here right look at this this atom straight up stole the electron here yeah do you ever have friends that kind of just take your things or you're like oh hey i'll buy you a a coffee and next time you can buy me one but it's like every time you're just always buying them stuff do you have friends that are takers? Yeah. I feel like friendships are so easily to really, yeah, your sister takes your clothes. Does she, does she let you wear hers back? <laughs> right? So we've got our friends that share and we like to share with each other. And it's this good mutual friendship because I give and you give and it's a good, a good friendship. And we all have these other friends, right? that resemble this ionic relationship where they just steal stuff. It's not cool. All right, so I want you to type in chat, ionic equals steals. All right, so covalent bonds, they share that electron. They meet in the middle and they share them equally. And ionic they bond because this guy's over here like, um, excuse me, can I have my electron back? Right? <laughs> He's like, um, sir, I can't leave that behind. That That's my electron. All right. And so he, this atom sticks around. It's still a bond because it's there, but they don't share it equally. Right? They do not share it equally. This, this atom on this side actually is is keeping it closer and is stealing that. So that's what I need you to remember today. Covalent shares, ionic steals. Covalent what? Type it in chat. Covalent shares. Everybody type in me shares. And ionic steals. All right. I like this picture of these dogs. It's just cute and it's totally relatable, right? There's two bones and two dogs. And so, and here they're sharing. Here is our stealing. They're going to steal the bones. All right. I have a question. Who do you have a better friendship with? The person that shares or the person that steals? Who do you have a stronger friendship with? Yeah, right? You, why, why do you have a stronger friendship with someone who shares? What's like a, a feeling that you have for that person? Yes, equal trust. Trust, right? You can trust them. Rather, it's with like sharing stuff that's on your heart and they share stuff what's on your heart and you keep that. Or rather it be like you're sharing actual possessions and they give them those things. It's a trust, right? I want you to remember that because in this relationship, there are strengths. And even though ionic, because it steals, you would think it's the stronger bond. It's not. If you could measure the strength of these two bonds, the covalent bond is a stronger bond. Okay, good. Let's move on to and look at one other type of bond and this is called a hydrogen bond, okay? Hydrogen bonds are 
the weakest. All right. Sometimes we think weak, weak is bad, but guess what? Guess whose bodies have to break these bonds? Yeah. Our bodies have to break those bonds and we have to use energy to break those bonds. So it's actually a really good thing that hydrogen bonds are so easily broken. All right. Hydrogen bonds are a form of covalent bond and they are the weakest. Hydrogen bonds are formed between water molecules, right? And water is super important for life, which also explains, you know, kind of why. Because it's something that has a bond that is kind of easily broken. So let's look right here. Here is the three types of bonds that we have learned about today so far. This kind of is wrapping up to me the take home things of today, right? We have our covalent bond, which is the strongest, right? Those relationships that we trust. What happens in a covalent bond? Share or seal. You're right. Keep it coming. Yeah, it shares. Here's our covalent bond. And you can see, look here. There are multiple atoms that are sharing with carbon. This is a carbon molecule. I cannot wait to teach you about carbon. Okay. But they're all sharing. These hydrogen atoms are all sharing with this singular carbon atom. They're all contributing one electron to the outer shell of carbon. Tell me about the ionic bond. Yeah, Cassandra's on it. What is it happening in the ionic bond? Yeah, it steals. It steals, right? It takes an electron from another atom and holds it close. And last but not least is the bond that happens between water molecules and hydrogen, all right, our hydrogen atoms. And these are our hydrogen bonds. And what I need you to know about those bad boys is that they are the weakest, all right? They are weak. They're not, not important though, because they're weak. So let's do some arm wrestling, why not, shall we? Let's do some arm wrestling. I want you to tell me who would win. Let's put up an ionic bond. Is going to arm wrestle a hydrogen bond. Who's going to win? Who's going to win? Yes. Why is the ionic bond going to win? Because it is stronger. It is stronger. Okay. What, um, what, explain an ionic bond to me. What happens in an ionic bond? Shares or steals? Steals. Good. Okay. What about a hydrogen bond versus a covalent bond? Who's winning that? Because a hydrogen bond is a form of covalent bond, but yeah, you're right. Covalent is still going to win. Because, yes, hydrogen is weak. A weak little noodle. Yes, you're right. All right, one more. Covalent versus ionic. Who's winning there? Who's, who's winning this, Russell? Yes. Absolutely. Covalent is going to win. Covalent is a sharer. It doesn't steal, right? It shares its what? What are they sharing and stealing? What are these atoms sharing and stealing? What's the bargaining chip? Cookies. Huh? Yes. 
Electrons. Everybody type electrons because we don't want to forget what we're sharing and stealing. Okay. Yep. Electrons. All right. You guys are rocking it through this lesson. So before we go, I want to draw really quick on the board. I want you to draw me. We're going to draw together. Let's do that because that seems intimidating, right? This is the nucleus of an atom right here. I just drew it. The nucleus of an atom. What goes in here? In the nucleus of an atom. Ooh, yes. We didn't even talk about neutrons today yet. Yes. Our protons, our positive charge. Will somebody put some plus signs in there? Is it too small? So we're drawing an atom. In the center of an atom is a bunch of little positive protons and also neutrons. Neutrons are a subatomic part, right? Subatomic means what? It's a piece of an atom. So we've got protons and neutrons here in the middle. And then what is orbiting around the outside? We have different shells. And we're not going to go into all of this because this is a lot of chemistry. Um, but on this inner, yes, you have electrons around the outside. All right. On the very inner shell, you can you need two electrons. Okay. After that, you need eight to be full. Okay, so there's going to be, let's type that out. In the nucleus of an atom, nucleus of an atom, it has protons, which are positive, right? Protons are positive, BP. Neutrons are just what they sound like, neutral, okay? There's no charge, no charge at all, all right? So the nucleus of an atom is right here in the middle. It's got your protons and your neutrons, all right? Around the outside, like a gate, all right, are going to be our electrons. What does our electron charge have? Positive, negative, or nothing? Yeah, negative. Okay. Electrons circle around the outside of an atom. All right. And let's write this out because it's important-ish. We don't need it all this we all this unit, but let's know it. All right. The first shell takes two electrons to make it full. And the, the second and as many as that has forever and ever and always, the second and every other shell, the second plus shells have eight. All right. And why do we need to know that? Why do we need to know how many electrons in, an atom needs to be full? Why is that even important? Yes, for bonding. You're right. All, with what for what we talked about today. All the, the it's like a constant game where atoms are trying to make bonds with other atoms to be full. The game is get your shells full. All right. It's a game of magnetism. Connecting. Yes. You guys are rock stars. You're doing it today. Does anybody want to take a screenshot of this before I move? Okay. This is an atom diagram. Nope. All right, you're done. 
I know. I feel like that was kind of heavy for a Monday, right? You're like, oh my, atoms bonding, little flying parts. It was easy. Ah, that's great. Even better. That's my job is to make this stuff easy to understand. Okay. So what next? What are your next steps? Well, we are going, um, here we go, to read today. All right. We aren't going to save this. This isn't Blackboard, but you can go through and snip anything that you would like to snip on these on this presentation. Um, and then if you would have time, I would greatly, greatly appreciate it. If you would go in and take this, let me find your link again. I'm trying to get the link. One second. Here is the link to take your kind of a pre ah gracie has it thank you lizzie has it all right if you would go in right now before since i'm ending class a little early and take play this game it's going to tell me what you know about unit two before we get started that's going to help me teach you right save us time on stuff we know You're totally fine, Cordelia. You're totally fine. You can read. Um, I I am going to just tell you this. I'm not a good example as a teacher, but I don't read well. I don't know. I have this mechanism in my brain that when I read, I fall, I fall asleep. Um, I like to do audio books. So if you have the option of letting it read to you or go back and read. <laughs> you would like to go back and listen to the lessons. If you would like to go and take markers and paper and just draw what we did today, right? What the reading does is it puts it in your brain another way. So you don't have to read. If that's not a good, efficient way of you learning, I encourage you to don't even stress Cordelia. I promise with my whole life. All right, if you um, learn better by drawing or doing, do something that helps you put this content, not just in your ears, but in your head, okay? Because this is stuff you're going to be taking. Biology is a tested subject for graduation. What that means is in the spring, you're going to take a test and it could have this stuff on it. So if we put it into our short-term memory, by the time we get to March, you're going to be forgetting it, all right? But if we work through this together, then we're going to be able to see that and have that in our long-term memory, all right? If you have not completed your unit test from last week, your unit one test, it is overdue at this point. So be sure that you go in this week and... Get that done. It is it is time. Um, the, a zero will be appearing in your grade book. And unit two opens right now, okay? <laughs> so you should be able to get into unit two starting right now after class. All right. Any other questions? You're welcome to leave. You're welcome to take your assignment. It, this assignment is, is not going to be easy, but you aren't expected to know this stuff, okay? So make sure that you log out and log back in. You're totally fine, Cordelia. 